What are your five favourite things to grow in your veggie patch? I know I've got my favourites, and some of them are a little bit different. You may have heard of them, you may not have. But these are the ones that I reckon everyone should grow, and they're quite unusual. I wouldn't say rare, but a lot of these you won't find in the supermarket. So my first one is this. I'll turn it around so I can see the better one. This is a trombicini, trombicini uh, and it's a zucchini type plant. I'm only going to grow three or four of these because it does give me so much. The fruit itself you can eat young as a green, um, green veggie and it's pretty much like any other zucchini. But my preferred way of consuming these little beauties is to let them grow and they turn a yellowy brown like a butternut pumpkin and they also become much firmer and tastier and I'll let them grow out to that yellowy brown colour before harvesting them and they can get a metre, metre and a half long if you hang them up from a trellis if you don't hang them up they curl and that's how they got their name I suppose, look like a trombone the best part of these well actually there is no best, there's lots of good parts about these is the way they grow they grow a long neck which if you hang them up from a trellis, grow straight. If you leave it on the ground, it curls up like a crumb bone. So I suppose that's where it got the name, eh? But another really good thing about these is they grow a very long neck, which is about 50 millimetres, two inches in diameter, and there's no seeds in there. So you can just use a veggie peeler, peel them off, slice them up, chuck them in a frying pan and cook them up, or mash them, or do whatever you want to do with it. And they taste very much like a butternut pumpkin. Not exactly the same. But to me, that's a much nicer taste than just the plain zucchini you have when you eat them green. The other benefit of letting them go to that light brown colour is they keep for ages. I actually ate one a year after harvest, and it was perfectly okay. So they do keep for at least a year. I haven't kept any any longer than that. But they do keep for a year if you let them get to that stage. These are extremely prolific, and that is why I'm only growing a few of them, because you get dozens. So... That's my first one, Trombosini. Another really good one to grow in summer is raspberry. This is one that I got just from a cutting off my existing raspberries. Really nice raspberry too. My reason for growing these is purely taste. These are superb. They're nothing like the ones you get in supermarkets which just taste like red coloured water. These are incredibly flavoursome and again prolific. So you get lots and lots of raspberries off them. And if you look at the price of raspberries in the shop, they're expensive. I've got an entire wall of them down here, which I'm hoping I'll get a few kilos off this, this summer. But again, really easy to grow. Get someone to give you a branch. If you're in my area, I'm happy to cut you off a few bits and you can plant them. Stick them in a pot for a year, then plant them out. And that year, you should get at least a few raspberries. But an expensive fruit, absolutely magnificent fruit to eat. Really easy to grow, but very, very prickly. Another little hint with these, never, never put them in the ground. They must be in pots because they will just take over everything. So don't do that. But that's number two. So we have a fruit and a veg now. Number three is, and these ones aren't ready to go out just yet, but they are tomatillos. Tomatillos, I believe, are a relation of the tomato, but they grow like a Cape gooseberry. So you get a little paperish lantern over the top of the fruit. Um, and they're quite sour. You probably wouldn't like them raw, but cooked up, just fried like tomatoes. Beautiful. Well, I like them anyway. I also make a really, really nice chutney out of this. Oh, nice, if I do say so myself. I'll thin them out while I'm here. So they make a very, very nice chutney. They're really nice fried, reasonably tart, um, and not hard to grow. And you can save the seeds. So it's one of those ones that uh, you plant once, save some seeds, keep growing forever. Number four, we're back to fruit. Actually, I think a tomatillo is a fruit anyway. There you go. Strawberries. Much like the raspberries, I grow these for the taste. I really like strawberries. I try to eat lots and lots of fruit if I can. Um, and strawberries are just a nice fruit to grow. The reason it's made my list is it is so easy to propagate. This is from the community gardens and it's just from a runner, stuck in a pot, left for a while, and growing. Most of my other strawberries I've grown the same way. 
I did buy some uh, supermarket runners. Failed dismally. They didn't grow at all. Probably sitting out too long. So don't let those supermarket ones or hardware store ones bother you. Find someone with strawberries and nick some of their runners. Ask them politely first, of course. Aligned to that, there's also pine berries. I've grown three or four separate plants now, all from the one that I originally started with. They're a close relation to strawberries, except they have a red and white berry. Um, I think they taste a little bit different, or I believe they taste a bit different. And you need strawberries to cross-fertilise with them. So that's a little aside, but that's another one that I would definitely be putting in in the spring. Finally, we get to something fairly ordinary, except it's not. And that is tomatoes. Every home gardener tries to grow tomatoes. I try to grow tomatoes, succeed some years, fail other years. The nematodes get them, or caterpillars get them, or some other disease kills them off. But one thing I've found in our climate, and I think this is probably similar to um, people in Queensland and the other subtropic zones, is that the cherry tomatoes grow easier than the large tomatoes. I find the large tomatoes either get caterpillars in them or the plant dies before uh, the fruit's fully matured. We get another heat wave of 100 and something degrees Fahrenheit, 45 degrees Celsius for a week in a row and everything dies. Uh, but the cherry tomatoes seem to just kick on and survive. So I recommend, and I do grow, Cherry tomatoes, in preference to the larger tomatoes. Sure, they're not easy to slice up for a sandwich, but chop them in half and throw them in a lump of bread. They work, uh, but they are very tasty. And pick the heirloom varieties. I'm growing Tommy Toe this year. Uh, I have done black cherry and a few others in previous years, and they're all good. But just try a few different varieties, see how you go. Fruit fly don't seem to get them as much, and the they just seem hardier. I don't know why, but they just do. So there's my five key plants to have out in the veggie patch, particularly in a hot, dry climate like I've got here. So that's a little bit of the stuff that I like to grow over that time period. Let me know what you grow. I'd be interested to find out. Comments. So please like, subscribe, see how these things turn out. Get to watch the recipe on tomatillo chutney. See how I get on with my raspberry harvest. Enjoy life. I shall catch you in the garden.